Hello everybody. Hello everybody, this is Not A Pro Gardener here and we are up in the cucurbit plot today. It's about a 20 by 20, roughly. We're just gonna kinda do a little update, walk around, garden update here, just to kinda show you how things are going. And uh, so far, this is the spaghetti squash, winter squash, the winter squash that we have. This is going to be our food stock. I plan on trying to can these so we can have them on the ready whenever we need them. And they are looking pretty good. The leaves do have some kind of discoloration. I think it's from the humidity. They're getting a little powdery mildew maybe on them. Uh, but other than that, they have done very well. Got a little runt down there on the end of the row, but that's not too bad. As you can see, these guys are just kind of trellis and hanging there. And they do get big. <clears throat> they do get a little bit bigger than this. They're almost the size of a smaller football. That's pretty close to about the size they were last year on me. And it could just be that I just grew them and they just got not enough water to get really huge. But they normally are a small sized winter squash. And the cool thing about these is that you can cut them in half and turn them upside down with some olive oil and some cavenders on a pan in the oven. And it kind of flakes out of the shell and it looks like almost like noodles. It's kind of noodle-like. <clears throat> and uh, pretty excited about this. Looks like we got plenty, plenty of uh, vegetables on that row right there so and if you know with your cucurbits you can see that they put out these feeder roots the plants way over here right here and it puts out roots all the way out here looking for that water might even be one there but they put roots all the way out there trying to reach what they can that drip tape, as you can see, that hill soaked. I had to run them for an extra hour today. The humidity, whew, the humidity out here, it's been above 96 degrees today. So they, I water them for about three hours whenever it's about that hot in the morning at 3 a.m. That way I can kind of come check on them before I go out to, uh, to the job. And uh, <clears throat> that usually is enough to last them all day until the next day. And I could water them more, but uh, it's so far it's shown to be plenty. And I've only fertilized these guys twice. And just look how prolific this whole plot looks. Like, it's really amazing. Like, this whole row looks like it's maxed out. The vines are towering over. I've helped them up all the way through there, and they just, they won't stop. They're almost growing down to touch the ground again. This is like its second course of vines here about to touch the ground and it's doing that for just about every plant I planted them all on two foot every two foot I planted a plant and sometimes there was two plants and I did not thin them just for production's sake this was my succession planting of zucchini summer squash and some eight ball squash down there on the very far end and then here's my watermelon and uh, my cantaloupe on the end down there not very many made it, so I just made them one row, and I'm just kind of shading out this whole section right here so I do not have to weed that section. So when the vines come out, I just toss them back in, and they just kind of cover that plot, that little spot over there, heavily to shade out the weeds. As you can see, they've just been putting off runners like crazy. I haven't seen any watermelons yet, and this is the Moon and Star variety watermelon. But they do a very good job of shading out whenever you throw them vines back like that. And I've been trying to keep on a spraying program for the bugs. Just to kind of keep the bug pressure down to help control it a little bit. <clears throat> to help control it a little bit. And uh, these are the Hales PMR cantaloupe that I got. Powdery mildew resistant. As you can see all them zucchini and summer squash varieties all the way through there. They are huge looking good they're almost four foot tall it's hard to believe but they're almost 
chest high. It's crazy. It's just right about belly button high right now. And some of these on the end are kind of runts, but uh, they haven't been picked yet. We just got back from a trip, but uh, we got some eight ball squash down here going strong. A lot of these are going to be chopped off and used for, uh, usually I just kind of grind them up for a zucchini bread or anything that I can use them for, you know. One time I've made like a little hash brown out of them. I think that's the Alexandria squash. I really got to get those out. And these are the spineless beauty zucchini plants. Spineless. So if you have troubles with the spines on the zucchini plants, this is the way to go, guys. I'm telling you. The kids enjoy picking them. Now, to the baby butternut squash. This is another winter squash that is a good putting up plant. You can use this for your uh, canning, which is what I plan on doing. And we're going to can these so far. There's a little bit of bug pressure, but there's plenty of these guys growing. And they're just hanging there, doing their job. Some of them haven't been pollinated just yet. See that right there? That's what we're spraying for. We're going to take care of these guys here in a minute. We're going to hit them up with some... Uh, some bug spray here soon try to help control them guys a little bit but uh, this is pretty much the gist of it I'll show you the backside here in a second we've got some weed pressure here on the end this is what it looks like from the back as you can see there's tons of fruits out there and they are doing pretty good there's tons of vines I expected to see quite a bit more but there is quite a bit of uh, vegetables on this row here. Next is our first planting of spaghetti squash and zucchini. Had a couple of spineless beauties. Spineless uh, zucchini beauty plants. I think that's the name. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure. But I got some spineless zucchini plant here. Golden Delight. And a couple more Golden Delight zucchini plants. And some slick pick squash and a delta squash plant in there somewhere. These guys were kind of runting along, so that's why I succession planted those on that one row, whole 20 foot row. Planning on chopping those up and freezing them so we have those vegetables on the ready because, uh, if you anybody's noticed, and if anybody that doesn't know, these plants you got to pick them like every other day. If you're watering them on drip tape, you got to pick these plants like every couple days and there'll be at least one to two fruits per some plants and they may not be huge I like to pick them a little small so I don't have to deal with any seeds because if you plant this many you're gonna have plenty and more just a little uh, just a little tip for anybody that needs food and they don't want to put a lot of effort into it cucurbits and the zucchini and the summer squash all of them winter squash it is a very good food provider with little effort i mean i had to weed a lot because it was a new garden plot so there's always a lot of weed pressure when that that uh, ter comes with the territory but spaghetti squash this row right here there's going to be tons of food off of this thing and i'm probably going to be hopefully doing a video on that and uh this whole summer squash and zucchini row here that's going to put out tons of food for the family. Every evening, I will expect to come out here and pick some for dinner. So that's at least one side for about five nights a week, I would say. Yeah, you're probably going to get tired of it, but if you need food, this is plants that I recommend because they are very easy to take care of. Once they start looking ratty, look like the diseases are taking them over, yeah, you're probably going to want to just pull them up and start over and succession plant another row. But uh, once these guys are done, I'm just going to pull them up and uh, probably just direct seed another row in there if I got enough time in the growing season. So, so far, everything's looking very vigorous, lush. 
the powdery mildew is going to start taking some of this stuff down here in a, probably a couple weeks. So I'm going to spray some preventative stuff for that on the leaves as well. But uh, this is not a pro gardener here. And uh, I'm going to take you in close and show you another pest issue that you need to catch early. Right there. If you can see it. That little cluster of eggs. That's what we're going to be spraying for. So I might be able to catch these guys early. I noticed there was some bug pressure, but like I said, we was on a trip. I sprayed them before we went on the trip, but I'm going to spray them with something a little bit more knockdown power here soon. This plot's not really, <clears throat> not really been a big issue for me, but I'm definitely going to be spraying these guys right before nightfall to try to prevent any honeybee damage or any bee...